Since uh, there's no theory or anything to discuss, you know the Ohm's law, uh, we call IR, potential across uh, resistor should be proportional to the current. That's what we try to investigate, okay? You can click on this first link that will bring you into a page look like, I think this one, this, it should look like this first and then click on this arrow and then that will bring you into a page like this one, okay? That's the one we need for the first part of the experiment. Okay, any question? All right, and also um, uh, if you have uh, the, there's like certain amount of student, I think uh, you guys has a little bit of trouble in the online quizzes and the in-class quizzes so far, I think. Uh, if you're getting less than 60 point or so, those quizzes, you have to be concerned, okay? Uh, because that's not good sign. You can earn all the other points, uh, submission, homeworks, things like that, and the labs even, you can get the full point. But at the end of the semester, what matters is actually your in-class quiz points, online quiz points that all together about like 25 points, then the final exam is 20. Then there's about like uh, 45 points, uh, 20, I think 25, 35, about 55 points there, okay? So that 55 point decide your final grade. So you have to be, uh, extra credit doesn't help at all. Extra credit is like, you know, just one percentage of your grade. Nothing can help you that 55 point decide whether you pass this class or fail this class, that's all. It's very fundamental, okay? So the uh, ideally what, what I try to do with the syllabus is trying to help people who are struggling, but at the end of the semester, every semester we see that issue. Uh, people think that other things can help, but it is not technically, okay? Uh, to get it into even C level, you have to really carefully investigate the final grade, the structure, okay? Don't mislead. Assuming that this and that can help these points right here. So this is what the issue is, okay? This part, that's the important part, okay? 25 point for the in-class, 10 point for the online, and then 20 point for the final. That is 25 point itself. So you have to be in at least 60 percentage on that three things to get a C. Assuming you get like 100 point all of these, okay? All of the below, if you get 100, is still this decide whether you're passing or failing this class. You have to be very careful, okay? So I'm giving out points, almost 45 points free in this class. Usually in, in physics classes, we don't do it generally, okay? So the take, giving out point, free point mean, I know you, you work hard to earn them, but I don't care your final answers for any of those, like uh, free class quizzes, post class quizzes, if you, show you are learning, I try to give the full credit for those, okay? And the homework even, if you try to write up something and then try to show me you try to learn, then I give the full credit, but not for this, not for this tree, okay? That tree I carefully take a look and then uh, you're gonna get the point reduction accordingly. So that's the danger part, okay? This because this is the time uh, you have to think about very carefully. We are closing to the, you know, half a semester now in one or two weeks. And um, what you have to do, the you can still improve, but you have to start working for that, okay? So the one way to do it, go to the tutoring center and then set up a group study session with the, uh, with the tutor. So we have very good tutors, uh, Amrit, John Pierre, both of them are very good and know exactly the structure of my teaching. So they, those two guys can exactly tell you what you're supposed to do to succeed this class. Anybody can tell anything, okay? But uh, if you're getting the advice, that person has to know what kind of things he's talking about, not just the physics, 
who's the professor, what's the structure of the class, and then what type of way he's teaching, what type of way he creating the question, things like that. So those two guys know very well because those two guys work with me long period of time, okay? Uh, any other tutor also can help you in terms of physics point of view. I strongly suggest you to make a study group and then uh, it's like individual SI session for you guys and then start working. Uh, because I see at least five or six people in really, really big trouble can fail this class, okay? Attending the class, doing all of these does not guarantee anything, okay? Do not send me an email at the end of the semester. I did everything on this part. Still, I'm failing the class. I will not respond, okay? Please understand that, okay? Generally, when I was a student, we had only one exam, okay? One mid exam, one final, that's it. There's no homework submission, no anything. You fail the mid exam, you fail the class. Uh, and even you can't get a, a, a appointment with the professor if you fail actually that's it end of the end of the end of the discussion okay so either it's like you know go towards or, or or go away right something like that but we don't do it uh, that way any longer right so we want to support you guys to succeed but i don't feel like some people are improving few of them improved from the beginning to here uh, there were a couple of students had a lot of trouble in the beginning of the class, but I saw they improved so much. That's a really good sign. But I still saw, still observing few, like maybe three or four students probably seems to be not improving at all. That's my concern. Okay, I want I want you guys to be succeed at the end. I know this may be maybe the last course you are taking to actually finish your degree, uh, the diploma. But if you know, you know, understand what it takes to pass the class, that will be a problem at the end. So please try to understand that and then uh, try to, you know, uh, try to do everything needed to actually uh, continue towards that success. Okay. Any question? All right, so because uh, you have to really see what uh, the bigger picture is, okay? not just individual quiz. And also, on the other hand, if you have trouble with one or two first uh, in-class quizzes, getting low grade, I know some people got 50s maybe, nothing much to worry because I'm going to drop three lowest grade there, in-class quizzes and the online quizzes too, but, but you have to continuously improve. That's what I'm talking about. If you're not improving and then you stay on the same that region, getting 50s and 40s, that's a danger. At the end, you're not going to get even 70 percentage total. That's a problem. Okay, so make sure you in above like 60 percentage range in class quizzes uh, above 60 percentage above 70 is actually better. Then it's guaranteed you're going to pass the class especially in class and the online quizzes that too is very critical okay if you do that then the final exam will not be difficult at all final exam is going to be based on those questions so you're going to be fine that 20 you can get a lot of point without any problem okay guys any question okay please uh, think about that okay and if you want to talk i'm always available okay just reach out and then uh, stop by we can uh, see what we can do about it, but in generally, it's actually major parties on your side. You have to spend enough time for those materials. That's what I see. Uh, this class is not similar to physics one class. The material wise, every chapter has a lot of information. I know you guys working most of the time and then have other works, other responsibilities, but uh, this class need a lot of your time too so that you have to think carefully how much time you spend that decide actually your final grade technically okay that's what i see most of the semesters okay guys so let's continue uh, please uh, please talk okay especially for i'm um, talking this about few students not everybody few students who actually has continuous trouble on last three in class courses. I'm talking about those few guys, particularly you guys need to, you know, think about that seriously. 
All right, so the potential uh, uh, Ohm's law is very simple idea we talked about last time, right? So the V is directly proportional to the current. That's what we try to investigate. So that proportionality constant is actually the resistance of the medium. So that can be any medium, like it can be an instrument, it can be a, just a material. And this particular case, we're gonna use a resistor, a standard resistors, okay? So usually resistors are look like cylindrical shape, very small cylinders, right? That's why in this particular setup, uh, you can see all of these signs right here, left hand side, very corner. All of these are like real life apparatus sign, right? I have a battery and then wires and then the bulb and then these are the resistors, the standard resistors. The only difference is that it, the standard resistors are exactly look like that and then it has a two uh, connection wires on both sides. Okay, that's the missing part. This circle right here is the connector for this case. And then these lines actually can uh, use to read the resistor value. First line is a number. There's a sign number for that one, the particular color. And then second, second line is actually 10 to the power value. And the last line is actually the error. How much like when you're using the resistance, the resistor gonna heat it up, we talk about last class. So the resistance value can change as a function of heating. So that tells you how much changes can happen that change most of the time within like one to two percentage. It should be less than one percentage because if the resistance value changes as a function of heating more than one percentage, then the circuit you're building gonna be in trouble, right? So you're gonna but the electronic circuit needed to do certain things, assuming that resistance is constant and that should be constant for longer period of time. So that's a problem with the heating. So the sometime actually resistance can slightly change. That can affect it. So, and uh, then the switch right here, and then let's build the circuit in a bit. Hmm? And on your right hand side corner has a couple of other operations, uh, current direction and electron direction. We'll talk about that in a bit and labels, values, and then I can bring the potentiometer, voltmeter, and then ammeter. Generally, those are the, the not matching up exactly our classwork because if you do a classwork, we have one multimeter like this big and uh, that multimeter has a has a connection, has a, a rotating uh, item. Uh, the, we can actually rotate to a different values which we want to measure. I mean, uh, amps, volts, ohms, and then all the other stuff. Nowadays, good diameters can measure even temperature and then all the other uh, parameters like capacitance and everything can be measured directly from one meter, okay? So that's not available here. And uh, then right here, wire resistivity, make sure that's at the lowest. Technically, we assume wires doesn't have a resistance, but it's not really true, particularly in our classwork, the wires we use are longer and larger ones. And some of the wires are extremely old. And uh, as a result of that, the old, all the, the, I mean, the how how long we use the wire doesn't doesn't matter. But what matters is that some cables actually break in the middle because of the entangling each other. Okay, so the sometime when we set up the circuit in the in the class setting, those are the really really nice experience you're going to be missing. You can't figure out what's wrong at all. Circuit is fine, all the connections are good, but not working. Then at the end, you have to check the wires first, whether the wire is actually disconnected in the middle or not, because sometimes the wires are disconnected in our lab. So those are very, um, very fun thing to experience. Okay, sometimes students spend like, you know, half an hour to figure out why this circuit is not working. At the end, just one wire is actually uh, disconnected in the middle. So make sure wire resistivity is tiny or almost zero. We assuming that is actually zero, okay? And the battery resistance, we are assuming that also zero. Uh, technically, battery resistance is, doesn't matter. What matters is actually battery voltage, okay? Uh, battery resistance also very, very small relative to the external uh, resistance we apply. Uh, in the circuit resistance, usually in, uh, in the order of 10 ohms, maybe 100 ohms, even more. 
but the battery resistance is about like 0 0.01 ohms or so generally because of that we can neglect that too and uh, circuit i can uh, we can take a look right here by using like real life uh, symbols like this right here right hand side this battery side tells you the real life sim uh, symbols if you click on the other one it will show you how the circuit symbol look like because when you're drawing the circuit we're not going to draw real life apparatus we're actually using the symbol for that okay for next chapter that's what we're going to do in exactly we're drawing the circuit by using these symbols okay any question Okay, then let's build a small circuit. Now, if I want to understand the Ohm's law behavior, I need the circuit, right? Let's build the circuit. I need the wire and a couple of wires. Actually, I need a battery. We'll connect the battery here and I need the resistor. Let's place the resistor here. And uh, then we need the switch, right? So let's put the switch here. And then I need to measure the current on my circuit, right? So to measure the current, you need the amp meter and the amp meter should go serial to the circuit. So we serial mean on the same line, okay? So then you have to connect these connections to get the closed loop. If you have a closed loop, then actually current can pass through, okay? That's all, it's a very simple experiment. So please build that circuit, then we can start uh, talking about what to do after the circuit, okay? And if you want to disconnect any of the connection, click back on the same connection point, then the scissor will appear, then click on that, that will disconnect the circuit, okay? It's a very simple idea. And uh, any question? Okay, voltmeter should go parallel to the resistor so which mean parallel mean not in the same line away from the same line okay i'm going to keep the voltmeter here put the voltage probes this is a black probe that is a zero voltage which means zero relative to the battery zero side battery zero side is the black side okay so that's a negative voltage i'm going to place my black probe right here on the resistor which is connected to the battery black side and the red probe is the positive side. Battery positive side is actually this uh, yellow color side. So I'm going to place this to my resistor relative to the battery yellow side right here. Okay. Now your voltmeter should show you zero because circuit is actually not connected. Right here you have a switch. Switch is actually on uh, break position. So I have to close the switch. Then only the circuit will connect. When the circuit will connect it, uh, current will pass through the resistor and when, then actually you will see the voltage across the resistor, okay? That's very simple idea. Any question? Okay, then uh, let's continue. Let's uh, close the switch and then you can see electrons are moving now, right? Usually electron moves, you can see battery negative side to the positive side, but that is not our standard current direction. I mentioned that last time too, standard current direction is actually opposite to the electron motion, okay? Actually electron play, electron create the current, but when we define in the current for the circuit, it is actually defined opposite direction. So if you click on right hand side, very top conventional current direction, the arrow, red arrow, now you can see that it's moving from positive to the negative. That's a conventional current direction, which is the one we need for next chapter, okay? We don't care next chapter electron moving direction at all. Okay, any question? All right, so the battery voltage you can change if you click back on the battery. Uh, this is small uh, extra window will appear just below right here. Uh, then you can actually change the battery voltage. Now it says nine volt. You can just increase that one by one, or you can click and drag. You can increase all the way to the 120, or you can go back to the zero. Okay, just you can keep it somewhere maybe nine. That's the standard battery voltage uh, when we're using in our lab setting. And the resistor also you can change the value. Click on the resistor. 
yellow color appear around the resistor and the resistor values you can change again, okay? So I can go from zero. If you go to the zero, you can see one, one thing. You can see battery is burning. Reason if you go to the zero, if you look at it carefully now, how much the current value passing through this circuit, you can see that is about 158,000 amps, okay? 158,000 amps, so that's why the battery is, but not only the battery, the whole circuit gonna burn. Now, that can happen even now a real circuit too. If you connect the battery with uh, small wires, which has almost like zero resistance, and then let that circuit run for a while, those wires gonna heat it up because there's no enough resistance, nothing there, then the electron pass through too much, as a result of that, it's going to heat it up. Because of that, make sure I have a certain amount of resistance on the circuit always, okay? Um, we can start with some number here. And if you have like battery voltage, maybe nine volt resistance about like, let's start at maybe 10.5, for example, then you should see voltage and current in your measurement items, okay? Any question? That's all, then it's it's that simple. All we're gonna do, increase the voltage slowly and then measure how much the voltage and current through the resistor. And then by using those two numbers, we can recalculate the resistance. That's it, then we can compare to the existing or the known number. Okay, guys, any question? Okay, then let's uh, continue. So we're gonna take a look three different resistor values, okay? So we can start with the 10.5 and you have to take a picture of this too, your circuit because you are supposed to do a lab report for this one, individual one. So let's, uh, let's collect that uh, diagram somewhere here. Let's take a picture. I'm gonna use inbuilt screenshot in the Excel, okay, but you can do the screenshot any way you like, but this is the easiest way. If you do the screenshot by using the screenshot function inside the Excel, then you can take the screenshot uh, and it automatically goes to the exact location where we need that. And that is screenshot has to show all the uh, information, not just the circuit, okay, all the information because that is screenshot should go to your procedure section, okay, in your report. So let's collect it somewhere here. If you have a screenshot, always make sure you rename that as a figure, okay? Figure one, this is, you can say Ohm's law simulator, for example, right? Ohm's law simulator, and then if you have a picture like that one, always make sure you give the picture credit, okay? Just uh, you have to type this one picture credit or the photo credit. And this is coming from phetcolorado.edu, okay? So phet.colorado.edu website. So you don't need to have the whole real website there, but at least you have to tell where it's come from. And that's it for that one. Then we. Uh, so we don't. We usually have put the figure name only. Say it again. Usually we put the figure and the name. That's it. Rather than the website, which we don't do no. before. No, you have to give the picture credit if you get from something. Okay. If you're doing this for the report, report should actually show you where the picture is taken. Because I'm so not after. Is that the link for apparatus? We put the link. Yeah. That is different. Apparatus and procedure section, you have to have the link and then under the picture, if you look at it, my, if you look at it, uh, I think I did not put here, but generally we have to, okay. So that follow that uh, from this point. Because that important because that picture not ours. We actually taking the screenshot from someone else. Generally, you have to give the credit. This link is not it. Okay, so you have to practice. Okay, any other question? 
Okay, that's uh, that's important actually. Okay, so the since that is not our simulator, we have to tell where it, where are we actually getting it, and also your procedure section has to have this real link too. That is our simulator link directly. Okay, and that's it. Then we'll collect the data. So we'll start resistance about ten point five. Voltage about nine volt. We can go back to maybe like one volt and then start increasing slowly from there. Okay, uh, I try to simulate this exactly how the numbers match with our real in in person classwork. That's why we're going to start here. Okay, that's what exactly we're going to do if it is in person setting. We're going to reduce the voltage as much as possible, then slowly increase the voltage, and then measure the current and voltage together. Yeah, you can put the simulator link if you want to here, but the simulator link separately should be on your procedure section like this one, exactly how I put it there. So generally that's fine. I think if you put the simulator link and the picture, then people know we got the picture from that simulator, but it's also better to put with the picture description where the picture actually coming from, okay? So that good to do that practice always. If you even use a picture who uh, who took the picture, you let's say if you do the in-person setting, your friend in the group uh, took the picture and share with you, then you're supposed to give the credit. Okay, that's why I just purposely put that here. Uh, but that's not really super important in terms of simulator case. We put in the simulator link anyway there, but we'll do the both. That is good for anyway. Okay. All right, any other question? Then let's continue. Voltage is measured in volt, current is measured in amps, and the resistance is measured in ohms. Ohms sign you have to figure out or insert by using insert and the symbols, right? So please find the omega sign from there and then insert into that place, okay? So that's going to be exactly the same actually throughout other three cases. Okay. And uh, let's do one here. And then this is not actually group work, but it's still I'm going to put it into a breakout session to actually continue next to. It's the same data collection and then you can do it very easily. Okay. Yeah, you can copy and uh, paste from the Omega here from the top. That's okay, I think. Yeah. And let me start from the one volt and make sure we need to report everything, all the decimal places we observe in the simulator, right? When you have a one volt current passing through is just 0 0.10, right? And resistance I can calculate V divided by R, right? So equal sign V over R. V divided by R. So exactly I'm getting like 10 ohms, but I'm expecting about 10.5. The reason that error comes, your ammeter is actually cut down after second decimal place. That's the problem. Okay. The voltmeter is fine. Voltmeter measure the right number, but the ammeter is actually cut down. Okay. So that's why we have a little bit of error, but that's okay. If you're doing in-person setting, we're going to get error anyway because of the little bit of wire resistance and the other other errors can happen still during the measurement, okay? And also the sum of the hour meters are not really accurate, can't show more than like two decimal places in, in class setting too. That's the problem. Okay, so it's close enough. Let's continue and then see what happened to that number as the voltage increases. Any question? And let's increase the voltage maybe to like maybe 2 volt. Current should change 0.19. 2 volt 0.19. And then this one you can click and drag, right? So 10.5. The next one is better. So that's what we try to see whether uh, if I collect a series of data, I can take a look what's the average is, even though one data point is not really good, uh, not really accurate, but maybe the average of all those range of data may be good at the end. Okay, That's what we're trying to understand. And this is the only command actually function we needed in here. 
you can add that directly into the uh, resistance value here because there's no other function at this point needed. Okay, I'm gonna just put it that right there on the table, but uh, you can add that below the table, okay, always. And in terms of report again, if you add this into the table directly or the below the table, you don't need to resubmit uh, or, or redo those function in Appendix C, okay? That's two different way to do that functions. You can collect all the function in your Excel sheet, put it as Appendix C, and then call it as needed in your discussion. Or you can put it on just beside the table and then as the as you collect in the data section below the table, you can put all the function because since we're using the Excel, it's okay, I think. Okay. I'm using 10.5 right here. You have to make sure whatever the number given here, use that exact number. And then you continue this. Increase the voltage like one volt at a time. That's all. Three volt. No, appendix C is not a screenshot for, or anything. This uh, this is screenshot has to go. Please look at the sample lab report. Okay, that has all the information needed. So this is screenshot is actually go to procedure section, not anywhere else. Okay, this go to procedure section and this Excel sheet no need to be again put it into the appendix C because table by table you have to copy paste into your data section. And Appendix C is actually no needed at all because everything you actually putting in different section, okay? Rubric is actually talking about in-person class work. Uh, if you have done extra work, like for example, handwritten work or any other extra calculation, those has to actually put it back into Appendix C. But the way we do in this semester, we don't do it. We don't do any other extra work. We use Excel function to do every single calculation, and then those are embedded with the table itself. So, technically, there's no extra information put it in Appendix C. Appendixes are extra work generally. Appendixes are not information you repeating again, what you put earlier in the report and then you do you don't need to repeat that again in appendix c that's not the meaning of appendixes okay that's the idea so the rubric c is actually talking about if you have extra work done like handwritten work or any other extra work which you did not put into your data section those has to go into appendix okay that's right, in class data sheet is this Excel sheet, but this Excel sheet is actually you copy paste every table into the data. You don't need to put it back into Appendix C. If you want, you can do it, but I don't care that at all. Any other question? Okay, look at the sample report. That will give you a very good idea how it organized because in the sample report, uh, what the student is doing, he don't put the function with the table, he collect all the function and then put it as Appendix C. That's totally fine to do, okay? And it actually nice that way because all the functions are in one place, you can see everything very clearly. If you do that way, then you can call that function, you can see he's numbering the function, he can call that numbers in the uh, discussion section, okay? Okay, then let's continue this. Four volt. And increase voltage one volt at a time, three volt, 0.29. Four volt. Uh, 0.38. Five volt. 0.48, 6 volt, 0.57, and 7 volt. We don't need even that many data. We just need like five data points to make a graph. This is a linear graph. It's a very simple graph. 7 volt, uh, 0.67. 
and this one you can click and drag that will do the calculation you can see some points are very accurate exact number like the 10.5 i have three data point some are a little bit less but very close at this first data point is too little bit too off okay that's okay that the reason only reason here is actually the current value is actually doesn't have enough decimal place and also the wires may have very very small amount of resistance so that's the two errors you can discuss in the discussion section okay other than that there's no other human error in this experiment at all and the uh, Another way we can check it out, this one, we can make a graph, right? Because we know V equal IR. And if I put uh, V into, let's write it down, V equal RI. Let's put this into Y axis, I into X axis. Then your graph should be Y equal MX type. This is voltage Y, current is on X, slope of the graph technically should give us the resistance, right? This number. So we'll take a look at the graph. And each graph you have to rename again, right? Since I have a figure one here in the procedure section, there are gonna be another figure actually for with our second simulator. So we'll uh, keep that also here for procedure section. The figure two gonna be resistivity simulator. Resistivity simulator because of that I'm going to start naming this one in uh, starting from figure number three okay because in each report those figure numbers and table numbers should continue okay figure number three going to be then voltage versus current and uh, you can input more information we're going to do actually three different resistance values in the same figure okay as three different line not three different figures not not three different graphs same graph three lines so i can include this one voltage versus current for three different resistances okay resistors okay so that's okay that's good then let's uh, draw the figure Double click on that area, then usually in, uh, we start, we're going to start with scatter plot, right? So you can just put the scatter plot anywhere as you wish, doesn't matter where you place it first, okay? And you can click and drag always where it's supposed to go. So you can click anywhere on the Excel sheet, insert, charts, scatter without any line, just a scatter dotted only and then click and drag exactly just under the table here then when you copy paste this data it easier you copy paste each table and figure together okay table and then if there's a graph those two must go together in your data section okay graphs are not going to the procedure section due to any reason i know depending on how you done in your physics one class some instructors a different instructor has a different preference okay nothing wrong any of those methods uh, depending on their preference they might ask you to put the graph in procedure section when you discuss procedure there but that is not the sci real scientific report structure look like okay so in report real uh, the the paper like the published paper structure we don't put graph for any results in the procedure section. Procedure just simply say how you collect the data, how you done the experiment, and then all the other analysis and data are different section, okay? Please make sure you follow that accordingly. And let's put the data. Select data, right-hand side, top corner. Since we done a couple of graphs earlier, I think you should be much familiar with this now. Add. Left hand side, the X values should be all the current values, right? Cell number C10 proves C16, and the Y values should be all the voltage values, B10 through B16, click OK, click OK again, very nice linear data set. If you have a graph, you have to have a chart title, right? This is voltage versus current. 
don't put I versus B versus I, you have to really type the term in these uh, these places, okay? Really the, the word, they are not the V versus I, that's not good. And also when you're naming the graph again as a figure, don't just write V versus I, you have to really type the word, okay? Exact word, what those axes are. And extra information like three different registers, things like that. Double click and let's put the axis title, left hand side, very top corner, horizontal axis, vertical axis, and also trend line. In this case, linear trend line, okay? You can see data is nicely fitted with our, uh, with our fitted line, okay? And then let's put X and Y axis titles, X axis, Current, right? Current unit is amps and y axis voltage unit is volt. And that's good. So, any question so far? Graph looks very good. And then if you have a graph, we would like to investigate the graph very in detail, right? Fitting the data and then so on. So you have to see the fitted line, right? By now you should know how to do this. You can uh, click somewhere on the fitted line, bring the cursor on top of that, double click. Then right hand side that window appear. Then the third option on the very top, trend line formatting, keep the linear, Click all these three icons at the very bottom, okay? That will show you the equation that should be visible like this one in the middle of the picture. Make sure that equation not look like that, cutting off the line and also equation not, should not be cut off with the axis too, okay? It should be nicely somewhere middle of the picture which is really visible, okay? And R is score one means our data is perfect. That's the idea, right? R score one is data is perfectly fitted with the fitted line. However, you can see my resistance value getting from there is the number in front of X slope of the graph, which is 10.463. If I rounded that to one decimal place, that's a perfect number. That's the idea, okay? So the idea is like, we may have one or two data points which deviating. However, if I look at the graph, in terms of average behavior, I should get a better uh, outcome from that. Okay, that's why we always try to do the graph. Of oh, this one, all you have to do double click somewhere on this dotted line, exactly on the dotted line, not the data point. Okay, dotted line, double click, then this trend line format option appear, then keep the linear fitting, and then you scroll down all the way to the bottom of that. A menu bar and then click all of these three icons. There are three boxes at the very end, very bottom. Just click those three, then this will appear. Okay, that's good. Then we can take a look, one calculation, complete calculation for actually this case. And the next two, you can actually do uh, this calculation yourself. Okay. So the R1 unit should be ohm, right? You can actually copy paste the unit directly. Maybe that's a good idea In, instead of inserting, right? It's already there on the table one. I can copy paste the unit for right here from that. Okay, calculated average from the table, equal sign, average function. And then highlight the data set from the D10 through D16, close bracket, hit enter. Average value 10.4. That's okay. Since it is a calculated value, I think we should keep maybe like two decimal places, right? So let's keep like two decimal places for all of these numbers to see whether I have a better number than 10.4. I need to see at least one more decimal place, okay? You don't need to round here because it's just a calculated value. Rounding you can do when you do the discussion, okay? And uh, let's 
That's right. Yeah. Another two graphs. You're going to put the, there's no two different graph. You're going to put the data set into the same graph. That's why when I naming this one, that's why I already name it for all three different uh, resistances because we're going to add those data set into here. Okay. Yeah. And from the graph, this value is in front of X 10.463. 10.463 is the number. We'll use two decimal places. That's enough, I think. Let's compare this then. P equals sign ABS open bracket expected value 10.5 minus calculated value divide by expected value 10.5 multiplied by 100. Okay. It's very good number. You can collect all of these function right here beside this table. You can even collect this function technically there. All these functions. That may be actually your table is going to be look nice if you have all the function collected into one place, right? So we'll collect into here. This is how I calculate the resistance for case one in my previous table and then this is the calculated average from this case we can say r1 cal average command and then we can do how i did the percentage error for this case it's going to be the pe since it's the same function again and again you don't need to recollect all of this I need just need the different functions. Okay. If it is the same function, don't need to repeat it again. And from the graph, you can just say here R from the graph, we can just say, uh, which is equal slope of the graph, right? There's no function, but we can tell a little bit of information. Okay. That may be useful. All of this information is actually useful when you do report. If you have all of this in your Excel sheet, when you do the report, then you know exactly how you did certain things and then how you calculate that will be help you guys to just uh, finish the discussion section very easily. Let's do the P for this one too. equal sign ABS open brackets expected 10.5 minus calculated uh, in this case from the graph E cell number 36 close bracket divide by expected 10.5 multiplied by 100. Uh, my graph value actually better, right? You can see PE is just 0.35. PE for the calculated is actually 4.97, okay? Maybe you can add one more word here, PE for, you can add maybe PE for calculated. because then I know what PE I done there, right? This will add PE for graph, right? So then I know exactly what kind of calculation we done there, right? So please add that term. Okay, guys, any question? All right, so I, I will let you to collect the data for other two. And then if you don't know how to add the same graph, the same data, I will show you that too before you before I put you into the group work. Uh, but there's no group report for this one, okay? But, but still, when, when there's enough time in the class time, I will put you into the group work and then you can discuss together and then finish it quickly, okay? There's no figure too. When you put this data right here, what you have to do, double click on the same graph, same graph, and then select data, and then keep the series one, that is actually for our resistor one, okay? You can rename that, add another series. Give the series name for this one, this is actually for R2, and then select the X values from here, current for the R2, and the Y values, voltage for the R2, and then that data set automatically go into your, <coughs> your same graph one, okay? So that's what you have to do for the uh, third one also. Then you will see here three different line, like three different slope. Then I can uh, have like one graph with all the information we needed for the table one, okay? We naming this as a figure three. The reason I have actually two figures in our procedure section with the simulator pictures. Okay, that's why.
Good. Okay, let's take this. Is going to take like only ten minutes to do. Okay, let's. Uh, I will put you into breakout rooms and let's see. I will bring you back in ten minutes. Okay.
Okay, guys, good. Everybody completed. Okay, then let's take a look at the data. You should have this two data set right now and the calculation too, but I will do the calculation again. So the resistivity for case two, V over I, 55.6, we expecting 55.5, okay. So it close enough. And the last one, V over I, same voltage we use and only the current is actually different the the case two i'm getting almost like 100 the reason is the third decimal place is actually cut down uh, in the ammeter okay that's a problem there that's okay we're going to get a little bit of higher on that one and let's uh, add the data so the same graph there should not be three graphs one graph with three line okay double click select data and then you can add a new series. You can put even the series name. This is resistivity two, X axis from resistivity two, current values, Y axis from resistivity two, voltage values. Click OK, click OK. Then you should see a new line, new uh, dots. Those are different colors. That is actually our new resistance. You can see the slope is different. The reason now the resistance value is different. Okay, slope is the resistance itself. Then add the train line. Then add the new train line. Double click. Add the new train line linear. When you do that, it is asking which series you want the train line. You have to select the new series, series number two. Click OK. And then you go to the train line options. You can click even more options for R2. Train line options, format train line, the last icon on the very top, keep the linear. Make sure you click all of these three that will show you the equation, okay? Keep those equation close to the line uh, where you can identify which uh, function is actually for which line, okay? And let's do the other one, double click again, add data. Um, I can even actually rename the series one. If you click on the series one and then edit, I can give a name for that. That is actually resistance one, okay? And let's add the new series for resistance three, X values for resistance three, current values, and then Y values for resistance three, voltage values, and then click OK, click OK again. There should be a new line, okay? Different color, new data set, and add the trend line for that one again, linear for R3, and also do more option for R3, and then make sure you go to the trend line format and then click all of these last three options so that will give you a new equation for actually our new function okay new data set all right so i have all three lines on the same graph okay all three lines should be visible and since it is three different slope there should be enough gap between them and uh, then we can take a look uh, the rest of the calculation any question Also, you can add like legend, for example, like if you double click here, left hand side, very top, add chart element, you go to the legend and then you can add legend on the top of the graph, then that will show us which is which. Uh, blue dot is R1, orange is R2, the gray dot is R3, and then the linear fitting again for trees, okay? And the linear fittings are actually not important. What is really important is telling that colors of the dot that probably useful to have it, okay? So I'm gonna keep that colored dots legends, but I'm gonna delete this linear fitting legends that we don't need. We know which fitting is which, but this information, the color, which color is which resistance, that may be useful to have on the top of the graph, okay? And any question? I just put the legend on the top. Uh, you double click on the graph page somewhere and then very top left hand side corner has a chart element 
and then inside there you will find the legend and then click the legend where you like to put okay. usually like on the top you can put anywhere like top bottom or maybe sideways there's different way people do depending on the how the graph look like but this one probably the top is the best place to have the legend okay any question All right, then let's do the calculation table number two for those three again. The uh, I need actually the same ohm symbol for next two, right? I'm going to copy the same uh, ohm symbol for next two. And then let's bring the calculated average again as we done earlier, average command, average function and then highlight the data set for the case two resistances close brackets 55.24 little bit of more error there than the previous case and the orange color line is for the resistor two and the number from the slope of that graph 54.885 okay 54.885 and average for the graph tree, average function for the graph tree, actually it's all 100, there's no meaning even average, but uh, do the function anyway. And the number from the graph is again 100. There's no difference at all. And these ones, then we have to do the PE, okay? When you do the PE, you can click and drag, but you have to edit appropriately the resistance expected value, okay? Otherwise, you will see an error. I will write the function again. ABS, open brackets, expected value 55.5 minus calculated value, post record, divide by expected 55.5 multiplied by 100, okay? 0.48 equal ABS, open expected, 55.5 minus from the graph value is actually cell number E37 close bracket divide by 55.5 multiply by 100 1.1 percentage error for that one little bit high then the last one equal ABS expected is actually 95.5 minus the calculated average divide by 95.5 multiplied by 100 multiplied by 100 there's there should be a little bit of high error there because it rounded automatically to 100 okay again the same that number going to be the same but you have to do the function anyway abs open records 95.5 minus expected number E38 divide by 95.5 multiply by 100. So any correction? Okay, so we finish the first table and the graph there should be one graph with three line don't draw three different graphs okay so follow exactly what we do in the class and then the table number two percentage error we completed the in terms of function i think this function we done for the case one is enough numbers are changing but it's the same function you don't need to repeat the function you know again another four different times for each function so i think this is enough for table number one and two Let's uh, is go into the next case then, resistivity analysis. Uh, question. Dr. Yeah. Uh, what, what was your name of, of, of C, uh, figure three? This is the figure for, three. For three, di for three different resistors, okay. Yeah. Thank you. I just add that in, I mean, you can just say voltage and current, but I just add extra information since you have like three lines there, it's better to tell more information. Yeah. Okay, then let's take Professor, a look. Uh, yeah. For some up? reason, I can't change the name of the legend. 
Uh, you can't change name of the legend here. You have to change the name of the legend in your series. Ah, okay. After okay. legend come, it will not allow you to edit. You go back to the series, like double click on the graph and then select data again and then click on the series right here, then do edit. Then put the whatever the name you want on that series, okay? Okay, guys, so let's uh, continue to next part. Uh, same simulator, we can take a look like the one of the things we do in person classes, we try to understand value of the unknown resistance. But the problem with the simulator, we can't have unknown resistance technically because all the numbers are going to be show up. But let's assume like we don't know the resistance of one particular item and then we'll uh, revisit that. Okay. To do that, there are a couple of other options. Actually, you can see different resistances. Uh, even the fuse right here, I can use if I want to. And uh, let's see, there's another item, pencil. Let's check it out whether I can use the pencil for this one. So let's get rid of this resistance. You can break the endpoints and then kick and drag to the corner. It will go away. And then let's try whether the pencil is conducting. Yeah, so I can use actually pencil as the unknown resistance. OK, assume we don't know the resistance and then we'll try to calculate the resistance value of pencil. OK by doing the same way, exactly same measurement. Okay, any question? That's what the table number three asking. Technically, there's nothing new. You know exactly what to do. So what we're going to measure is the voltage and current for the pencil. And then again, we'll change the pencil into light bulb and then we'll do the same analysis, okay? So the voltage, you can do the same range, probably, I think, good. Uh, let's see whether I have measurable current on volt one. Yeah, it should be fine. I think we can do exactly the same range of the voltage values like we done earlier and mean, then measure the current. We start from one volt, same circuit I use. I just get rid of the resistance and then uh, put the pencil on there. To find the pencil, you may have to go to left hand side, very corner option. There's a down arrow. If you click that, you can see different things the dog, hand, things like that. Okay. Then there was a pencil on there. Then we'll start again one volt and then we'll continue increase the voltage and then collect the data. Okay. One volt, the current is about 0 0.04. Two volt, current is about 0 0.08. Three volt, current is about 0 0.12. Four volt, current is about 0 0.16. Five volt, 0 0.2. Six volt, 0.24 and 7 volt 0.28. Any question? That's one of the data set we need, and then we can. Anybody have any question on there? We can get rid of the pencil and then we can do the same with maybe the light bulb. Okay, there's two different light bulbs. I think this one is higher resistance and then the first light bulb is actually lower resistance. Okay, maybe you should use the lower resistance since I'm using just a small battery. If you have extremely large resistance in your circuit, there wasn't, there may not be any current. Okay, that will be a problem. Let's try with the light bulb then. Okay, then we can try again light bulb and then voltage again. Let's check whether I have enough current, measurable current at one volt. I think, yeah, that should be good enough to measure. There will be a little bit of error, but that's okay. Any question?
exactly same voltage range, but let's check out the current, okay? At one volt, just point one. Two volt, point two. Three volt, point three. Four volt, point four. It seems to be increasing like each one, right? Yeah, point five, next one. Then it should be point six, I think, the following one. Then next one should be then point seven. Current, yeah. Okay, friction. Okay, let's do the calculation. This is the same thing, there's nothing new, V over I, and then click and drag, which means our pencil has about 25 ohm resistance, and the light bulb may be about like 10 ohms, I think. Yeah, 10 ohms resistance, okay. Technically, we could check them in the simulator, but we'll assume if it is a real in-person class work, we're not going to know those numbers, okay? Unless you measure with the ohmmeter. Um, let's make a graph again for these two. This is going to be the now figure four. Figure four, this again, the voltage versus current, but you have to give a specific because now I have a previous graph look like same voltage versus current. This is going to be voltage versus current for the pencil and the light bulb, okay? Pencil and light bulb. All right, any question? Let's do a graph, then insert. Uh, let's put the graph somewhere up first. Chart, scatter, plot, double click. Let's put the data of the first one, select data, and the series one, uh, you should name now, right here, because it's better. Uh, first one for the pencil, and the pencil current values for x-axis, pencil voltage values for y-axis. Click OK, and then I'm going to add the both right now, OK, at the same time. So you're going to add another series for the light bulb light bulb, X values, current values for the light bulb, and the Y voltage values for the light bulb, then click OK. Then both series of data you can see on there. Then we can do the fitting in a bit. And uh, click and drag the graph into that area where it's supposed to be. Then when you copy paste this data, you will report that will be easier. You can follow up starting from the beginning, except those two simulator pictures one by one into your data section, okay? And uh, make sure everything else like standard now, you have to have axis title and the chart title, and you have to have a trend line for actually both you have to do trend line, okay? We have to do one by one for pencil first, then again trend line, linear for the light bulb, two trend lines, okay? Same thing, uh, chart name, you can just say voltage versus current. For pencil and light bulb. And then axis name are uh, the same like previous case, current and the current in amps and the voltage in volt, okay. Okay, then make sure the formulas are visible. Double click on the trend line, keep the linear, click all of these three. And the other line, the blue line, double click, click all of these three and also add the legends too, okay? This is the function for the orange. This is the function for the blue. If you don't see enough decimal places, actually you can increase that. Should be more decimal places in this 
uh, slope value here. Double click on, if you click on that equation, there's a small black line appear around it, like a border line. Then click on the border line, go to the right hand side, the fourth option, and then change this into general into numbers, and then change the decimal places into like four. Then you will get a, a better idea about whether that exactly 10.0 or maybe more values are there, okay? Uh, we can use maybe two decimal places. I thought that should be enough to confirm that. Same for the other one. Because if it just say 25, I'm not sure whether it is exactly 25 or maybe 24.9, right? So that you have to make sure. Okay, guys, any question? Um, may, I say, may I say how you have the current setup for the light bulb, please? How the... Simulator setup? Yes. Yeah. It doesn't matter how oh, you, you, oh, you added an, oh, you added a switch and a so so you added a, a switch and uh, another wire? Uh you can. The switch is right here, the previous switch. Yep. I did not add the another switch. This is just a wire piece right here. You even don't need oh, that. I, this wire I piece know. even not needed. You can probably use the same wire like the previous one here and then drag it. Then right. it will still work. All right. No, I guess yeah, I, I must have missed the uh Okay. Uh, the other the other wire. I did the switch. But thank you. Yeah. No, because I'm trying. I'm trying to get. It. I'm trying to get it to. Uh, I, I feel like I to activate. Um, okay. I'm getting up, but I'm not really getting anything. Okay, probably your circuit might not uh, connect it properly. If you don't see that the red arrows are moving, then it's not connected properly. Right. Yeah, check it I, out. Yeah, it has to be like at like a certain at a certain uh, uh voltage. Uh, what did you say the voltage would have to be? Voltage, we use the same actually. We use the same uh, range from one to about seven volt. Mm. I did not change any of those there. Just keep the same voltage range, but uh, check the current only. Okay. So for this one, we are not getting any errors at all. You can see it's 25 here. I'm getting all 25 and then the light bulb 10 here. I'm getting all 10. So the percentage error is going to be almost zero. Okay, guys, any other question? Okay, then uh, let's put the legend also for this one. Double click at chart element legend. Uh, we will put on the top. I don't need actually fitted line information there, but I would like to have the light bulb dose information there, okay? Uh, fitted line information is already embedded automatically, right, with the color. So, but you have to tell which color is which. Blue color for pencil, uh, orange color for light bulb. If you have more than one date, one data set in the same graph, you have to give it specific for the person who reading later, otherwise will not understand. Okay, any question? Okay, then uh, let's do the percentage error for this one too. Then let's take a break and then we'll uh, continue the resistivity scenario after the break. Okay, this is a short lab. We might get a little bit of extra time. Maybe if we get extra time, we can take a look uh, some question in our last chapter or maybe the summary of last chapter probably. Okay, table number four, yeah. Calculated value, I need the resistance symbol, right? So you can omega symbol, copy and paste probably from the previous, that may be the easiest, or you can insert, okay? From the graph also, the same symbol, percentage, 
in this case we will be doing percentage different because we have the calculated and the graph, but we'll assume we don't know the real number, okay? But we're gonna get zero anyway. Okay, so calculated average for the pencil AV, average, and I can click and drag the range of data. It's all 25 technically, nothing, nothing gonna happen, but let's do the calculation, it's 25.0, okay? And then from the graph number in front of the X, right? Uh, for pencil blue color line, it's 25.0, right? So there's nothing needed to be done there. We'll keep at least one decimal place. I think one decimal place is enough for this table because it seems to be there's no error at all, okay? Okay, so the percentage different equal sign ABS open brackets. We comparing these two doesn't matter which goes first. Okay, you're gonna get zero anyway. So the cell number C seventy four minus cell number D seventy four close brackets divide by open double bracket C seventy four plus. D74 close bracket divide by two close bracket multiply by 100. It's zero anyway, I just did the function because I can collect the function here. Okay, that's it. It's really no need to be do that table. Uh, the PD gonna be zero, but it's nice to collect all the information in one place. That's why that table is still useful when you do the discussion part, right? So let's do this is actually R for the pencil and average function and then from the graph you can see r pencil from graph is just the slope of the graph okay is the slope of the graph and then let's do pd function too because in case if the numbers are different then function is important right pd for the pencil that's a tree command uh, tree function we may need actually for this case, but technically last one doesn't even matter. It's zero in a way for both case, I think. Okay, guys, any correction? Um, for, ta for table three, do you want us to take a picture of the pencil and the, the light bulb circuit? We can, I think, uh, since it's a different, the circuit is same. You can maybe add somewhere here just below this table. There's enough space, two small pictures of those two. That should go to, uh, if you want to put those pictures into procedure section, you can collect those pictures in here. That may be a good idea, actually. Since it's a different, we can collect that picture here then those pictures you can actually add into your procedure section, okay? So let's collect those two also because it's slightly different than the previous. It's the same resistor earlier, but now I have pencil and the light bulb separately. That might be a good idea actually. Yeah, so let's take two pictures of these two. circuit and everything and then let's put that two pictures we may have to rename all the figure numbers because now we're going to have more pictures here okay let's do that actually so let's put that here insert screenshot That is, all of these pictures are your procedure section. This is the simulator itself, okay? So you don't need another separate simulator picture. All of these pictures go to your procedure section directly, okay? One by one. So case by case, you can use the picture and then do the little bit of, you know, bullet point, couple of sentences about how you collect the data. Since I have the full picture for the previous case, I'm gonna get two small pictures for these two. So this is actually for 
case 2 and then let's get rid of the pencil and then do one more picture with the light bulb. Yeah, it's better to have those two I think because it looked like completely different type of circuit here even though the circuit is exactly the same it looks very different than the two previous okay so let's took uh, let's take another picture for this one insert illustration screen short screen clipping i'm going to take only that circuit diagram because i earlier had actually nice picture with all the information okay then these two you can put it together then we can rename this okay let's rename this one this is going to be still resistor simulation resistance simulator for simulator for pencil and light bulb circuits yeah so you can name it a you know anyway you like doesn't matter as far as it's explained what it is right so you don't need to write exactly what i write here and the light bulb okay and those two can go together in your procedure section when you discuss that circuit okay and this one is figure number one this is figure number two then we need at least one more figure for the other simulator later we will be using another simulator because of that now i have to rename actually this this is going to be then figure number four and next one going to be then figure number five okay so make sure you rearrange those accordingly now let's uh, complete this one two for light bulb equal average command it's the same technically but i'm going to do that function anyway and the light bulb from the graph is also 10 the percentage different going to be zero so there's no meaning doing it but we'll record that information that will be useful when you do the discussion part okay now you should complete all four tables and the two graphs with each has multiple lines okay and the commands nearby the table and also these four pictures second two pictures can go together that's okay and let's uh, take a quick break and then we'll start and then continue on the resistivity by using the other simulator okay that again we'll do the same way uh, we will discuss one and then we're going to repeat the wires into three different wires and then i will uh, put you into breakout rooms for work together there okay collecting the data and analysis part two. Any question? Okay, then let's take a quick break. 43, let it start about in 10 minutes, okay? All right, now any question so far? Uh, yeah, so what we done, we had the two circuit diagram for the pencil and the light bulb. Then I name it as a figure two resistance simulator for pencil and light bulb. And we need one simulator picture, all of these for your procedure section, okay? All of these pictures. So I need figure three, actually the other simulator, we'll name it here too. Figure three gonna be then uh, resistivity simulator. Now because of that, what we done, we changed the figure numbers from here of our graphs, okay? First graph now should be figure four, then the other graph now is actually figure five. Okay, that's the small changes we done. Okay, any other question? Okay, then let's uh, continue. Let's take a look resistivity. Technically, I mean, if you do in-person setting, resistivity uh, calculation is actually, it's a nice setup. It's a completely different setup. 
uh, very long wire, like maybe one meter long wire, copper wire, different radiuses we using for in person setting class. Uh, three different radiuses, but the same length and then setup is actually the overall picture is very similar, but that that whole lengthy wire is actually not available with this particular setup. That's a problem. Okay. Um, otherwise, the idea is still using the Ohm's law. There's no big difference at all. It's a use of Ohm's law again. Okay. Let's take a look at the other simulator. You can click on the link top of the other picture. That will open up the new simulator should be look like this one. Okay, and the, that's that one uh, has to connect a little bit differently than the previous one. Okay. So, if a little bit delay to load, just don't worry, just uh, let it to load. Sometime this website can little bit delay. Okay. It, uh, this website is from Indian uh, University. It's sometime depending on this time, uh, it should be night there. I think should not be a lot of people accessing. Otherwise, it's going to be usually very, very delay. Because it's more than 1 billion people there, right? It's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of high school students and people accessing that. It's not going to be responding. Okay, any question? Okay, now it has a power supply. This is a power supply very similar to our in-person setting. We have exact kind of power supply. Uh, the, the outer cover and everything is slightly different, but the format is same. Uh, and then the switch, like a regular switch we have in-person setting and the rear stack, this is actually a variable resistor. So by moving this top piece right here, in uh, left and right, then we can actually select which region of the, which amount of the wires. It's just a wire rotated around the cylinder, that's all. There's no, nothing else there. It's called Rio stat because it can use a variable resistor, okay? And then this is our, uh, these are galvanometers, technically. It has uh, inside a small coil. Uh, we will take a look that very in detail, maybe after two or three weeks in our magnetism section, how the galvanometer works and things like that, what force is acting there to rotate it. It technically have a, a small coil when you apply the current, that coil two side actually generate two forces into the opposite direction. Then the coil actually has a attachment in between the through the center axis, then the coil can actually rotate. Depending on the current applied, that magnetic force is changing. So that's how this actually give the value, okay? The, these two look like, you know, give the numbers because it digitize, but the in-person class, you have a pointer like the needle, and then it actually moves from one end to the other. It calibrated to certain values of current, and then by looking at that, we can actually measure exactly. Those are the, the measurement instrument people used like almost 200 years ago. So that that is still useful. We have a multimeters, but it's still galvanometers in certain cases can give us a better uh, better information. Direction of the current, how the current sensitivity, things like that. We have galvanometers in our lab uh, can uh, measure down to microamps, very accurate, okay? All right, then we'll set it up this one. Um, left hand side corner, you can see a couple of options, right? Right now it says silver, that's a different wires. Usually we don't use silver wire, okay? Silver is expensive nowadays. Even I think uh, it's gonna go maybe crossing the level of gold probably, it's rare. Uh, usual wires are copper, right? We can start from the copper. Gold wires we use sometime for extra sensitivity circuits. Uh, when I was uh, working on some of the experimental setup like 10 years ago, we using the gold wires to actually do certain connections. That's because the gold has very low resistance compared to the copper, okay? So if you're doing like very low temperature measurement, like close to the zero degree, we measure stuff uh, in like micro Kelvin region. So we have to have extremely nice, extremely uh, sensitive measurements there. So we have to reduce all the resistance coming from the circuit. So we use the gold wires for those cases and the platinum wires too. 
So the platinum is much even better than gold, okay? But since those are not normal, we'll start with the copper, then we'll check it out, maybe iron or aluminum and the nichrome. Nichrome is an alloy, so that's a standard why we can in the lab, okay? So we'll start with the copper. We can keep the length same number given and the diameter the same number given the resistance of the rheostat you can start at the lowest maybe or we can start maybe a little bit well, you can start at the lowest that doesn't matter technically what's the rheostat is it's not part of our measurement numbers at all but it's part of the circuit to vary the voltage then we'll connect this one to connect this, what you have to do, you can even check out how the circuit looks like. Uh, if you have a battery, battery is the voltage supply. I have to connect the battery negative to the switch and then switch to the rheostat, one side, rheostat other side, to the voltmeter. In between the voltmeter, I have to put the wire piece and the voltmeter at the end should be connected to the ammeter. Ammeter at the end should be connected to the battery again. Finally, I have to have a complete loop, okay? So let's uh, connect this one. Negative, when you're connecting, you bring the cursor to the connection point, then the cursor change into like hand sign, then you can click, okay? Otherwise, no meaning clicking anywhere, okay? When it change into the hand sign, click, Keep that click and then drag to the next connecting point. Then the wire will appear and then do the connection automatically. And then other end of the switch to the Rio stat, bottom point right here, left hand side corner. Then Rio stat, Rio stat has another connection on the other side, very top, from that connecting point to the negative side of the voltage. Positive of the voltage to the ammeter. There's a wire piece in the middle. Click and drag, put it in between the voltmeter, then that will connect automatically, okay? That's the wire now. And the battery or the voltmeter positive goes to the ammeter positive. Now, you should see all of those wires, wiggly lines, and the circuit is connected now. Okay, any question? When the after circuit is connected, it does not allow you to change the length at all, okay? This will be automatically locked. It will allow you to only change the rear stat, okay? That's the idea. So the length is about 10 centimeter piece. Now the diameter is about 0.2 millimeters of that wire. It's a copper wire. And the rear stat has its lowest point. We can change that to actually uh, take different values, okay? or we can actually start reoist at the highest value and then we can decrease. Doesn't matter technically how you start there. What we really need is the voltage and the current between the, in the circuit. Any question? Right now, there's no numbers here, voltmeter and ammeter. You have to close the switch, click and drag the switch. Then as soon as you close the switch, you can see voltage across the wire and the current passing through the circuit. That's the two numbers we need. Make sure those numbers are changing. If you click and drag your rheostat, okay? If you bring the rheostat to the other end, you can see now current is slowly increasing, voltage is slowly increasing, okay? See that? That you have to observe. Doesn't matter which side you go, lower to the higher or higher to the lower, it's gonna be linear behavior. So we're gonna get the graph anyway, but we will start at the highest uh, Rio stack point. That's how generally we're starting in the class because if the wire is very small, if you send high current in that wire piece, that's gonna burn. These are very sensitive, uh, sensitive wires because of the thickness is too low, high current can't actually pass through like the all type fuse uh, is also similar. Because of that, usually we start the rear is at highest point, lowest current, then we slowly bring in to the other side. Then you can increase the current slowly, okay? Okay, guys, any question? Okay, then we'll Take a screenshot of that one too, because that's our figure number three, right? Resistivity simulator. 
insert illustration screenshot screen clipping that i need all of this information of my simulator okay not just the circuit we interested all the other information to be interested there okay so that's our simulator diagram make sure that it's smaller in size we don't need such big picture in your procedure section okay we need fairly decent size picture but not super large okay so we have all three pictures they are good all of those three pictures must go into procedure section okay not the data Figure number one is the first simulator picture. Figure number two is the next two pictures. Figure number three is the new picture resistivity simulator. And the first graph is figure number four and the next graph is figure number five. So you have to correct those numbers yourself. Okay. Okay, then let's continue. Then we are on table number five. So what we're trying to do now, try to understand the resistivity. You know, a resistance is actually function of length and the cross-section area. And this I can write resistance is equal a constant times length over area. That constant is the resistivity, right? So that's the plan. So I can calculate the resistivity of the R. On the other hand, we can say if I have a wire piece, we should be equal to I R. So the R term I can figure out without measuring by measuring voltage and the current. Okay, that's the plan. Then you combine these two together. Then I have V over I, which is equal rho over A times L. Now, since I'm measuring voltage and current, I can rewrite this one. Voltage is equal rho L over A times the I. Now, if I make a graph putting V, voltage across wire into Y axis, current into X axis, slope of the graph going to be this whole term right here. So that's our plan. Okay, that's slightly different than the in-person work we're going to be doing, but that's okay. So the, at the end, we will be getting what we needed. So this is going to be current. It's going to be voltage. You have a data set look like that. Then you ask program to fit the data, take the slope of the graph. That slope of the graph M term should be equal to rho L over A. From that, I can calculate rho going to be A times slope of the graph divided by the length. And cross-section area, these are wires like a small cylinders. Cross-section area is pi r square. But in the simulator, r cannot be directly measured. What you're measuring is the diameter. Radius is diameter divided by 2. Cross-section area is pi d square over 4. Okay? Then you connect these two together. Then the resistivity is equal pi d square times the slope of the graph divided by four times the length. So we can do that calculation. Resistivity is actually intrinsic parameter like the density, right? Because of that, we can compare that number we getting to the known value. Like if it is a copper, copper has a standard resistivity, should not change. The shape of the size doesn't matter for the resistivity. So we can compare that number with the calculated value, okay? That's the plan. Any question? Okay, I think the resistivity value also should show in our uh, simulator. Let's uh, check it out that one. As I remember, that should show up somewhere in the simulator. Let's see. Let's reset this one and then see whether. Okay, so I reset actually. Let's connect that one. It, as I remember, it is they are given in there. They need to read from the simulator itself. Let's connect this one and connect here. Put the power supply on. Professor, the the material is silver, so 
power. Yep, so material should be copper. Okay, so let me connect this circuit. Copper wire in. Okay, all good. Put the switch in. We'll start the Rio start at the highest point. And where is the um, where is the resistivity value or show results, right? Yeah. 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 So that number is known. It, it we can find that in the data tables too. But we will read that. That should be correct, I think. Uh, that should be good now. Then we can start collecting the data, and then after we make the graph, we'll compare this number. That's all. And if we're getting that, that confirm many things. Like the Ohm's law also can confirm itself, and it can confirm resistivity is actually like the density, which is a constant for the material. That also confirm. It can confirm uh, almost every other uh, information or the objective of this experiment itself. Okay, that's. Uh, very nice experiment then. Let's continue. We you can start the highest Rio stat point and then decrease that. So what we need to write is actually the voltage and current, right? Case one. Also, I think we should record this information: length 10 centimeters, diameter 0.2. All of these material is copper. And the length 10 centimeter in meters is going to be 0.1 meters, right? Diameter, it is about 0.2 millimeters, right? 0 0.002 in meters, right? And the resistivity 1.68 times 10 to the power minus 8, and that is ohm meter. Unit ohm, you can copy paste from the previous one. And that should be all meters. All meters. Okay. All good. Then we'll continue. Any question? Point two millimeters. Correct. That should be divided by thousand, right? Point three zeros meters. Yeah. Correct. If I want to use it, the meters directly, that's a good point. Okay, make sure everything is SI units and the voltage measured in unit volt and current is measured in unit amps. And then we'll collect the data voltage versus current from our simulator. That's all we need. So we'll start. Voltage is your item which is uh, the the connected parallelly to the wire, right? So the right hand side one. 0 0.005 volt. Current is 0 0.1. If it is not enough decimal places, you can see right here it rounded. That's not a good idea. So I should record three decimal places, right? You can highlight the whole area and then add one more decimal place to all of those. Okay. Because if that point zero zero five rounded into point zero one, that's going to be huge error. And then uh, you can change. I need about seven eight more data points. You can change the Rio stat little bit. Click and drag, or you can use actually this right here. Okay, either way is okay. It doesn't matter which way you do. So I can click and drag this one little bit further down. Make sure you have enough enough uh, distance to get like six more data point at least, okay? This changes to 0 0.006, that's the voltage, and the current is 0 0.11. Earlier also 0 0.11, that may not be a good idea. Zero 0.1, 0 0.11, okay. There's no exact place to actually move your Rio stat. Okay, you have to be careful. If you revisiting, uh, repeating that part, then you may not gonna get the same voltage value. Okay, so be careful with that. Point uh, one oh seven current, and then let's move this little bit further. I'm gonna use this actually slider tool right here. Okay, that easier. 
and make sure these two numbers should change a little bit. Okay, if it is not changing at all, then that not going to be a good idea, I think. So this should change a little bit. At least like one decimal place change, okay? Yeah, that's going to be a good idea. Using the arrow keys, you can move it slowly un until you see the voltage value change at least one decimal place. Then you read, okay? If, if you repeat the data from the previous, any of the data point, then our graph not going to be good at all. So that's the problem. So now the voltage is 0 0.008. The current is 0.145. So let's change this again. I'm going to... Change that until I see at least voltage value drop to one more decimal place, so increase to one more decimal place. Okay. 0 0.009, the current is 0 0.164. And then you continue, same process until your data table complete. If you have like six, five, six data points, that should be good enough. It's a linear graph, but we'll try to get more data points. More data is the better always, 0.196. And this guy a little bit further, 0 0.013, 0 0.013, and the current is 0 0.23, 238. A little bit further, 0 0.015, current is 0 0.285. Maybe one more data point. Point zero two four, and the current is about point four five three. Okay, so we have the data. Okay, so your numbers will not match exactly this case because amount of move I, I did for the Rio stat not going to be the same. Okay, that's okay. Just report the data you have. Okay, that's fine. Then let's make a graph for this one. This is going to be then figure number six, right? This is going to be figure number six. Uh, this is going to be again voltage versus current. However, this is actually for three different wires. Three different wires, okay. Name it accordingly. It's uh, do the graph then. Now you should be much familiar making the graph and everything. Chart, scatter plot, double click, add the data. Now we'll uh, name the data too, okay. Add the series. First one is actually for copper. We'll name it properly because we're going to add three different data set into the same graph, okay. X values should be current again, right? And Y values should be voltage. For the case one, the copper wire, click OK, click OK. Then you should get a data set. You can see this data set is not really super good like the previous, right? Because the re one of the reason is the voltmeter cut down after third decimal place, it is actually rounding. So that's going to be the error, okay? So if I have, if I want to get really good accurate data, I need to read a couple of more decimal places in the volt. Voltmeter is on millivolt already, so it seems to be voltmeter should be more than that accuracy, okay? That's why you can see it a little bit wiggly, but it's still overall linear behavior. Let's uh, do other stuff, like I need the axis title, Trend line linear and uh, let me check why my figure name. I don't need the copper actually, I need the series name as a copper. Okay, so you can delete that. I can put you can put the legend in a bit. Okay, so this is going to be again voltage versus current, but for three different wires. different wires, okay? And uh, it's not really super bad. Couple of data points move around. This and this 
at least two data points is deviated a little bit. We will see a little bit of error because of that. That's okay, I think. That's part of the game anyway. In class setting, we're gonna get more errors than this. This is gonna be current in unit times. Yx is gonna be voltage in unit volt. Voltage with unit volt and let's uh, check it out the formula. Double click format trend line, third option. Linear is fine for the fitting, but I need to click these three options, right? So that's the uh, number we interested. What we interested is actually number in front of X, right? If you look at the R score, it's not actually bad. 0.9995, it's very close to one, okay? So that's that number we always checking to understand how good the data fit with this particular function we use, okay? That give you a better idea about whether the function is uh, okay to use for this fitting or not. So this is fine, three nines, three, uh, three nines and five. Any correction? Okay, then let's uh, continue the calculation. Let's take a look at the calculation also for this one first, okay? Y1 known value we already recorded there, right? What is 1.68 times 10 to the negative eight? 1.68 times 10 to the power minus 8. And if when you're writing this one, if you, since it is a small number, maybe it's better to use a scientific notation. If you put the equal sign at front and then click enter, then it will do the scientific notation automatically, okay? Put the equal sign and then type the number. Then the Excel gonna change it into scientific notation. And the unit I have to put it right here for the resistivity. So let's copy that unit from here. Four meters. Okay, that unit will put it into right here at the top. Okay, then let's calculate from the graph. We understand earlier from the graph, that's our formula, right? Pi d square slope divided by 4L. Let's write that function here. Let's write that function here. Equal sign pi is actually pi, open and close brackets. Then that function can read all the decimal places in the pi. Otherwise, you can just type 3.14. That's okay, I think. But if you, you do that function, it's going to read all the decimal places. Okay, pi times diameter to the power 2. Diameter is 0 0.003 power 2. 0 0.3 power two multiplied by slope of the graph 0 0.0532, 0 0.0532 divided by parentheses four times length of the wire, which is 0 0.1. And then close brackets, hit enter. And that's very close. Even though you can see our data set is not super good, but it's still that number is not actually bad, okay? That's the resistivity uh, from graph. That's the resistivity from graph, okay? So that actually not bad at all. Very, very small uh, error there. Uh, then it probably might be rounding. So you make sure you have two decimal places here at least, okay? So you can highlight all this area, make sure you have at least two or three decimal places. I think maybe it's better to keep probably three decimal places on these because those are the calculated, but these actually reported values, known values to two decimal places, calculated values to three, okay? Then you should get one point probably six, seven. If you round it without decimal places, it will round it into two. If you have a hashtag shine, which means you don't have enough space on your cell. If you don't have enough length on the cell, it's gonna be hashtag shine. Then click on the letter on the very top column and then uh, increase the size of the width of the cell. Okay, it should be large enough to show all the numbers. Otherwise it will show you hashtag shine. 
then let's do PE equal sign ABX open brackets, known value minus calculated value, uh, close bracket, divide by known value, multiply by 100. So the PE makes sure not in scientific notation, okay? Always, if you have an error, just use the number in general and then change the decimal places into true. There's no meaning have more decimal place in percentage error calculation at all, okay? Percentage error, we just checking whether it's, uh, you know, enough uh, number to understand the percentage error is lower or higher, that's all. We interested what that number is. Nothing else. Make sure this part just numbers. This column D on this table in uh, three decimal places. First column C right here on the table is on two decimal places in scientific. Okay. All right. Since we done that for case one, now what you have to do? Do this actually for other cases. This is for wire one. Okay. Any question? Okay, then let's collect the data. All what we have to do, uh, reset the apparatus and then change the wire into next we'll do nichrome. We'll see what are the other option we have. We can do maybe aluminium and nichrome maybe. That's better because both of them generally we can find in uh, in-person lab setting, okay? We can find even the iron wires. We have those in our lab too. Uh, we can do aluminium and nichrome, okay? Next one we'll do aluminium. We have about 15 minutes. I don't I don't think it's going to be enough time to do another group work. We'll continue like this, okay? This is anyway, individual lab report. Uh, let's continue then this one. Then we can finish it up, everything. Next one, we'll do material uh, aluminium. Dr. Hobbin? Yeah, what's up? I was actually thinking with the, the graph where you put the data for copper, I was actually thinking that maybe we can also add add that data and add the data like for other for other types of metals, so like the uh, aluminium. That's right. Yeah, and and we can and we can compare it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we can add the same data into here. Yeah. Oh, uh, for for different wires. Uh, I I missed that part. Mm, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's aluminium? Aluminium, right? Is that correct? Okay, check the spelling there. Okay. All right, and the length of the wire, we can do like different length, or you can keep the length and diameter the same. It doesn't matter technically. Okay, let's keep the dose are same. Length going to be about then 0.1 meters, and the diameter going to be then 0 0.302 meters. And the resistivity value now different because it's aluminium. You have to uh, show results here to get that number, okay? So after we make the circuit, we can observe that. Uh, yeah, I think so. The spelling can be different in this is Indian side. They use actually British English, okay? So. I don't know why we, okay. why we just get rid of the I. I don't know why we're yeah. so different. No, I, I have no <laughs> idea. This is British English. We 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 were, as I'm from Sri Lanka originally too, we were under British like almost 100 years, I think from 17 or 1800 to 1900, 19, 1940 or so. We are under the British. And then before that, we are under different, different countries. We are under one time, I think, Proto Greece. Uh, and then we under another country actually, uh, Italian or, or somebody from the Europe. All these Europe Europe guys, you know, invade our area all the time. <laughs> Last couple of hundred years. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, then let's correct this one again. 
That's okay. You can write the the spelling uh, the way we write in America. Okay, so that should be fine. Aluminium wires go there, and then we'll connect this one, and then connect the battery. <laughs> yeah, Sri Lanka. We have very good, uh, very good. Uh, beaches and things like that if you like to visit that's a really good place to go you can go anytime except the monsoon period like the december we have a lot of rain other than that the all always like the temperature is like 80s or so throughout the throughout the year so it's really nice okay so let's continue uh, this one so results 2.82 10 to the negative 8 <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a good idea, right? <laughs> uh, 2.282 times 10 to the minus 8 or meters again, okay? Unit you can copy paste from the previous one. All right, guys. So, yeah, we can do a virtual trip <laughs> to the country. <laughs> that's a good idea. Okay, guys. So, let's uh, collect the data. Okay. Uh, no, the almost like everywhere in Sri Lanka, we everybody, you know, familiar with the English. We we under the British like almost more than 100 years. Uh, the people there, they speak more, better than me. There, there are people really actually English is much fluent than than I speak here. So they have really good the British accent. So nothing much to worry. And even like the poorest, the, the lowest level job people, even like the taxi drivers, so on, can understand English. Uh, yeah, we have a mother language different, but English is fine. So nothing much to worry if you're traveling that area. India, even every taxi driver is good with the English. Okay. Um, so in America, in America, we have like a lot of people live in New York region, can't speak English, proper English. But if you go to India, and speak to any taxi driver, he will link, he will speak fluently than we speak here, but British version. Yeah, actually, I think uh, a a chemistry teacher, uh, like she uh, she was um, of course, like she she was like born. I, I it wasn't Sri Lanka. It wasn't Sri Lanka. I actually, I actually forgot where she was born. But she but she uh, grew up in uh, in like in London. And, like, and so she has like that. She has like a really nice British accent. Right, right, yeah, yeah. British accent is really, really different than what we speak, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but she, but she was a, but she was a really good uh, chemistry teacher. I had her for honors and AP. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys. So let's continue this one. At least we can finish the second. If you don't have the time, uh, then you can finish the third one. I think just need to change the material only let's collect the data again so from the highest setting of the rio star 0 0.009 volt the current is 0 0.1 then let's change the rio stand until you should see at least the voltage change one decimal place okay 0 0.01 current is 0 0.115 and the Voltage change it to 0 0.012. Current is 0.137. Voltage 0 0.014. Current is 0.161. Let's change the view stat to next one. Voltage is 0 0.016. Current is 0.182. Oops, 0.182. And let's change the rear stat to next 0 0.022 voltage. Current is 0.249. Two more data points. Voltage 0 0.031. Current is 0.344. You can take one more data point. Voltage. 0 0.047, 0 0.047, 
current is 0.524. We can collect the other set too, and then we can take a look at the graph. Okay, I think yeah, we have about like 10 minutes. We can finish, I think, the graph also. Uh, we'll reset this one and then select the different medium, maybe nichrome is a standard wire we can find in person setting, uh, in person class. We'll put the resistor to the max and then connect the circuit again. Okay, since it is the same circuit, we don't need to take many pictures. You already have one that should be good enough. Okay. And like from wire, you can, if you look at it, the wire colors, those are actually different from each wire to wire, okay? And connect the switch. Okay, so we'll record the information to the material is like chrome. And the length is still we're going to keep the same, okay? 0.1 meters, diameter same, 0.302 meters. And the resistivity now 100 times 10 to the negative 8. So resistivity becomes much lower now, right? 10 to the negative 8, okay? And uh, let's do... Okay, so let's do the voltage versus current again. 0 0.309 volt, current is 0 0.097. 0 0.342 volt, current is 0 0.107. 0 0.383 volt. Current is 0 0.12, 0 0.447, volt current is 0.14. Make sure both numbers must change at least one decimal place, okay? Otherwise, graph will not be very good. 0 0.547, the current is 0 0.172, voltage 0.648. Current is 0.203. We take two more data point, point nine nine zero volt. Current is 0 0.311. And the voltage is 1.968. Current is 0.618. Okay. Everyone okay with the data set? Your numbers are going to be different, okay? You may not going to see exactly the same numbers, but uh, record whatever you see uh, properly, then you should be fine when the calculation done. Okay, guys, so the data you can insert into the same graph, okay? Double click new data set, add new series. You can name the series as we go now. Now the second series is actually for aluminum, right? It says aluminum there, but here I think it, it says aluminum, right? So that's probably the difference. And the X values again, the current and the Y values is voltage. So the pronunciation is very, very different. You see, when we pronounce there, we pronounce like letter by letter. So the my kids always laughing sometimes when I speak <laughs> because our pronunciation is in our mother language goes letter by letter. So it's very different than the standard English pronunciation. Uh, you can add the other data set too to the same one. Add the new data set for the nichrome. And X values current, Y values voltage again for the nichrome wire. And click OK, click OK, then both of the wires should show up. 
the problem may be with this particular case, uh, we're not going to be able to see all of them properly, probably. That might be the bad part. The reason is actually one has very uh, different behavior than the other two. So that's going to be a problem when I, when we observe the the tree graphs at the same time, right? So maybe you can try to increase the range of the Y little bit to see whether I can actually see it clearly, or if we can put the Y on logarithmic form, maybe we can able to see it clearly. Okay. Uh, let's see whether I can select the logarithmic scale. Yeah. If you put the logarithmic scale, actually you can see the uh, graph properly, okay? So that we have to do at the end. So don't do it right now, okay? After we fit and do everything, then we will put the logarithmic scale, then you can see the graph in expanded scale, okay? Don't do it right now. Let's uh, first finish the uh, data set and uh, fitting, and then we'll put the logarithmic scale. We'll add the trend line for the other two series, linear, series number two, aluminum, and the linear, series number three, nichrome. And I need the more option, aluminum. You have to click all of these three and then do again, trend line, more option. Uh, trend line, linear, which one we done here? So let's adjust this one first. You have to have the three lines, but the three lines may not be visible at first point, okay? You have to do it three times to see these three boxes first. And after you see that, you can double click on the Y axis Y axis data somewhere in the data, and then go into the last option on the very top right hand side. Then select the axis option, do the logarithmic scale. Then only you're going to see like the behavior of the data a little bit separated out. Okay. Otherwise, first two lines are going to go top of each other in the linear scale. We can't see it properly. Okay. That's why. So leave it in the logarithmic scale, then I can see it properly all the information. Uh, that may be the best way to actually observe the graph clearly. Otherwise, it's going to be like very bad way when it observes. Oh. Logarithmic to get the logarithmic scale first. Finish the linear fitting and everything, and then after that, you double click anywhere on the y-axis data, any data point. Just double click, and then the new window, new menu bar will appear on your right hand side. Then select the last option on the very top, look like the three bars. Then select axis option. Then a little bit on the lower, you will see the logarithmic scale base ten. This, we can change the base if we wanted to, but we don't need. We're just interested to see whether we can separate it out data in logarithmic scale or not. Okay, and it looked like nonlinear. That's okay because it's a logarithmic scale now. It looked like nonlinear, but it technically a linear graph. Okay, and also you can add the legend because that always useful to have if we have more information. Uh, legend may be important to show. Let me delete because too many information now. We don't need actually that fitted line information. What we need is just the data point information. Okay. Okay. This information you can keep on the top of the graph. Okay, so I think it should be fine now. Now you can see it a little bit clearly, okay? So that's the important part, whether I can see the graph clearly or not. Okay, guys, any question? And make sure you move that, that Y, that formulas for the fitted line a little bit away from the, away from the lines where you can see it clearly, okay? And then these three, now you know how to do that, okay? I will let you to do that. You just need to write the non-values here. 
then from the graph it's the same calculation you can click and drag but you have to edit the slope of the graph for each one okay l and a remain a constant there's no difference at all in this formula okay when you do the resistivity everything else remaining constant except slope of the graph okay that should be changed make sure when you do that you get the right slope for the right graph if you do that mistake your percentage error going to be very bad okay here yeah. so i think uh, uh, that part i think definitely you guys can do we can stop here but if you have any difficulty on the graphs or anything you can stay on the call um i will see you guys then on next week okay if you need any help you can stay okay for graphing or any other calculation